Here we are with Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World, episode 5. And yeah, last episode was our first episode with Roxanne, basically, where she's in our party. And it was more like a bit of slice of life, because you prepare for the lab Labyrinth, you buy some new gear and all that stuff, and after that we went all out. No restrictions at all. We did everything you could imagine with Roxanne. And I was surprised, because I didn't expect it to be in the first episode, where you get her in the party, basically. I thought it would maybe like later in the season, but nope, right from the get-go. And I liked it personally, I was surprised, I liked it, and can't wait to see what comes next, which is probably the Labyrinth with Roxanne. So yeah, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe, or comment, I would really appreciate it. And let's get to the episode. Adding skills to equipment. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing in the first few seconds of the episode. God damn it! Blacksmith. Okay, makes sense, I guess. Unique to dwarves. Makes sense. It's always the dwarves that are blacksmiths. Dude, I'm distracted. Oh, ho, ho. sneaky little bastards. I mean, I guess that I can't imagine that that's common in those times. Yeah, exactly. But finding one. And she's like, oh no, then I don't have him for myself anymore. That's bad. Maybe, maybe she gets a bit jealous. But I mean, I would guess that most blacksmiths are male. I would guess. Indeed, she is. <laughs> Dude, skin tight leather armor. Bruh. Holy shit! This is some flexible leather. God damn it, dude, I love this anime. So, he has two different types teleportation and warp. She can smell the way. Very handy. Oh. That's very handy that she's above average when it comes to smelling stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. So you have a crystal, then you kill him and that fuels the crystal? Interesting, okay. Good information again, man. She is very helpful. <laughs> okay, you, I guess finding them in the labyrinth is the rare part, so you can maybe buy them, which is maybe easier, but maybe it's expensive. <laughs> Come on, bro. I want to see Roxanne in action. I want to see what she can do. Nothing I do, you tell no one anything. No matter what I do. Don't tell anyone I have teleportation magic. God damn it. I guess maybe it just swings around because she's shaking her hips a bit because she's walking. It's teamwork. Let's settle with that. Oh, she was on a party already. I want to know her backstory. Have a seat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I tried to hold back. But I can't promise anything. And he's like, okay. She doesn't mind it. Let's go. <laughs> Can I taste your ears? Ah, so he means like touching again, not like tasting. <laughs> of what? Sponge cake? Yeah, probably not. Maybe he can make it and then sell it for money. Oh, is she fearing that he leaves her alone? Behind? I would never. I mean, she could 
Coming with him? I don't know. Yeah, right. I think she doesn't mind it. Hell yeah, exactly. That's my boy. And she's happy about it. Here we come, dude. Here we go. Harem sex. <laughs> okay, so black ones are the empty ones. Only 10 NARS. That's like nothing compared to how much Roxanne costs. So they are very cheap. But aren't they rare? If they are rare, then it's interesting that they are so cheap. Cheap. One million. Let's go. The grind starts here. 100,000. I guess we keep him for a long while. Higher? Interesting. Hello? Oh. Very interesting. Oh, it works. Here we go, that sounds like a plan. You probably can. Well, guess he has no time? What's happening? Is it not working? Is it... Hmm. Ah. So that's a problem. God damn it! She does that on purpose. Bending over like that. Wow. Then he should keep all of them. Crystallization upgrade 32 times. So maybe his crystal grows 32 times faster? That would be crazy. <laughs> Man, she is handy with her nose. <laughs> Oh, purple already. Holy shit. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. Again. So he can grow it 32 times faster? 10,000. Can he change her stuff? Let's see. So these are Roxanne's job. Beast Warrior level 6, Villager level 8, Farmer level 1, Warrior level 1, Swordsman level 1, Explorer level 1. Smart. Healing. Indeed useful. Oh! I guess that's what he does now. He wants to unlock everything he can. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. That's the difficult part, right? To know how it works exactly. Maybe you have to deal the killing blow with your fist. Oh, God damn! God damn! She's good? God damn it. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. <laughs> exactly. Same goes for me. Don't get, get distracted. <laughs> Is this enough now? Dealing the killing blow with fists? Monk, she got it. Maybe you have to deal enough damage. Oh, she killed it. So you need to deal killing blows. And I like Roxanne. So he wants to become the healer? I guess it makes sense. He wants to be versatile because he can reset all the, always. Okay, he's like trial and error. Try and error, try and error. Getting like the right amount. And do, do the killing blow. I like his. I like how tactical he is about that stuff. Oh, 
Yeah. Minor spirit increase, effect tiny MP increase, and trade wounds. So he has a heal. He has minor spirit increase, which might be maybe I would think spirit is normally like MP regeneration or like magic defense or something, and tiny MP increase, which is useful because with more MP he can cast a uh, meteor attack, meteor crush, I think it was called or something. Oh ho ho! What? She has no idea what he's talking about. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Amazing! Don't tell anyone. Amazing! I see something else that is amazing. <laughs> Dude, she was super useful. Don't sell yourself short. She's really good. She sniffs out all the enemies. She gives all the information. She helps in combat. She looks good. She's nice. Here we go. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> This must be heaven. I'm doing this happily. Don't mind me. Nothing about you is dirty. Okay, he doesn't. He isn't saying that at least. <laughs> he did already. Last episode. Oh boy, I know what's going to happen. We sweat more after this. We know what's going to happen. Oh. Exactly. Alright. Back to the dungeon. A labyrinth. Waiting room. Oh! First floor boss? Here we go. Let me guess. The episode ends. Do we at least see him? Oh! Alright, this was an amazing episode. I really liked it because of how much interesting information there is. I had to rewatch the episode because I was distracted quite a few times for obvious reasons. And so what got something that got me confused are the two crystals because they seem similar. You have skill crystals and you have magic crystals. And skill crystals you get in the dungeon rarely by accumulating monster skills. I don't know how that works. And then you use them to fuse it into gears to get gear with skills. But the easier way is to just buy it, the gear with skills, because otherwise you need a blacksmith with it, with it, which is unique to dwarves. And so dwarves can't be trusted because they can't say, hey, it failed because the success rate is low. And then they just sell the gear to someone else and make money out of it and, and scam you, basically. And then we have magic crystals, which basically is like you can find them in dungeons or you just buy them. And then you kill monsters, which accumulates energy in them to fill them up basically and when you reach 10 kills, 10, 100 kills, 1000 kills, 10,000 kills, 100,000 kills or 1 million kills they change color and are more worth and they are basically the most valuable thing in the dungeon and most people just go to green which is 10,000 kills or some go to 100,000 kills which is, which is blue so it takes a long time to get them filled up and Michio is cheating because he has a spell that can increase the speed by 32 times, which is basically one kill counts as 32, I guess is how it works. Um, so that's broken when you think about it. And then we got some a bit of backstory of Roxanne that she was already in a party, but was more like a background character because no one listened to her because she was new and she was more like watching the fights or try to attack from behind, sneaky and all that stuff. Uh, she was not really, like, considered, I guess, a full party member, which I guess mm, wasn't great for her, right? I would really like to get some backstory on Roxanne, like how she became a contract worker and how everything happened for her, because I don't think that she got born that way. 
So I would like to get some backstory of hers. I hope we get that in this season. And I also liked how Michio is like upfront with her and is like, yeah, you you don't have to wait for me to give you the command to sit down. As soon as we go into the ro- into the as soon as we come into our room in the inn, you can just sit down whenever you like, um, because she's just waiting there, standing there and waiting for him to give the command. So I like that, and we really got no the confirmation that she actually likes him, and because she was also worried when he mentioned his hometown, she is like, will you go back? Because she's afraid that if she's not needed anymore, that he will just sell her. Um, But he's like, yep, no, I don't go back, I stay here forever with you, and she was happy about it. So that's good to see that there's a bit of bonding now, and otherwise she gave lots of good information, like all the all about the crystals and she told us about the dungeon being like considered as alive because uh, the dungeon sends monster after adventurer and then he feeds on the the dungeon feeds on the bodies to grow and get bigger and dungeons multiply so that reminded me a little bit of Danmachi where the dungeon is also alive and if you are like weak in the dungeon then the mo- dungeon like sends monsters relentlessly after you to kill you basically so it seems kind of similar in that regard and what I also really like in this episode again is the stra- is like the strategizing of Michio, where he is like considering like which classes do I want to get, like which jobs he wants to get. He was thinking about getting a mage, but tried to cast a magic spell to maybe learn mage the mage job, but he didn't have enough mana, so he couldn't do it. And then he wanted to get the monk class so he could heal. And the way it is working is you have to kill monsters monsters with your bare fists. So what he wanted to do to get to get it like in an easy way, because just fighting with the fist would be too tough. So what he wanted to do is get Roxanne as like a distraction so that he can do damage with a sword and then when the monster is weakened he could attack it with a fist and deal the finishing blow to kill it. So what he did is like he lowered his stats by resetting it over and over and over again to get to the sweet spot where he wouldn't kill the monster with one hit with a sword, which took a few attempts to get the sweet spot. And then he swaps off his sword, resets again, puts all his points into strength, and then goes all in with his fist to deal the finishing blow. So I really like like the strategizing behind it, that he sets his stats and resets and everything to get like the best... Um the best like skill setup and everything for the situation what he wants to do um, because in other isekai animes it's basically like you have your character that is overpowered he has like crazy stats crazy spells and he just like uses it and bam done win and here you actually have to strategize and like reset your skills to get like the right setup for what you want to do to get what you want and that's refreshing i think i really like the strategy the strategic part about it um and i guess next episode will be really interesting because we fight the floor boss which i guess will be interesting and i can't wait to see how he looks and everything because we didn't see it sadly um but yeah if you like what you saw leave a like subscribe or comment let me know what you thought about this episode and thanks for watching until next time bye bye